Uh, well, welcome. Welcome to uh, this afternoon's program. We're delighted to have you here. Um, you know, when we were looking at the uh, Honduran uh, election, uh, there was a lot of talk about the uh, horse race. Who was going to win, right, Randy? Yes. Who was going to lose? Um, and, and although we always thought that that was important, uh, we felt that what was perhaps more critical was the day after the election. Uh, because of the enormous challenges that Honduras faces from a governance, security, et cetera, we thought that we not only take stock of the election, but that we have a discussion about where do we go from here, or where does uh, the president-elect go from here in terms of governing the country, light of the country being so divided now with the election, with no candidate getting really more than 38% of the vote, and then the Congress also quite divided and polarized. And so we wanted to have a discussion about the consequences for Honduras for during the next four years. And we're delighted to have uh, the palace we have here today, which I'll, I'll let Dr. Cruz introduce. But before I do that, I want to just take special note of the presence of our president, Dr. Rosenberg, here at today's event. You know, in addition to being president of Florida International University. He's also a well-known scholar of Honduras, having published a number of works on, uh, on that country, more recently a book on U.S.-Honduras relations that he co-authored, I think it was 2007. Uh, thank you for being here, Dr. Rosenberg. I wonder if you perhaps had a few comments to say before we start the, the program. And bueno, thank you, uh, Professor Moore. I don't want to I don't want to be the only one on the hook because one of my co-authors, Philip Shepard, is, is, is here and we put a book together uh, in the early 80s about this country that we love uh, called Honduras. And I'm really thrilled that we can have this conversation. It strikes me that uh, the challenges that we were looking at in the early 80s, the return to democracy, the opportunities to uh, lift uh, the people of Honduras and to close the, the wealth gaps. Uh, in many ways, there's still some of the, 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 the same problems that we're going to be discussing today in the role of elections. And in particular, quiero dar una bienvenida muy cordial a mi amigo Victor Mesa, porque fue realmente Victor que, que abrió las puertas de su biblioteca, de su conocimiento. A, a lo que nosotros uh, uh, veníamos a hacer, uh, tal y como era en ese entonces. De manera que saludarle a Víctor y la familia de Víctor realmente es una oportunidad única de agradecerle a Víctor y su familia para lo que nos, uh, nos, nos, ha brindado, nos había brindado en ese entonces. Y asimismo, eh, reconocer a los otros ponentes aquí y agradecerles por su sus esfuerzos sobre un país que, que, que todavía queremos mucho. De manera que muchas gracias, Frank. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rosenberg. So let me just, but before I introduce Jose Miguel, I should have introduced myself. I'm Frank Mora, the, <laughs> the director of the Latin American Caribbean Center. <laughs> Uh, now, let me turn the mic over to my, my good friend and colleague, Dr. Jose Miguel Cruz, who's the Director of Research and is also a uh, visiting associate professor in the Politics and International Relations Department. We're delighted to have him doing a lot of good work, including this particular forum, who he's responsible for. So let, him, let me introduce uh, the, the mic to him. Well, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Uh, and thank you, my my guests for accepting uh, without any hesitation to, to come here and, and speak about Honduras. Um, we're really honor, honored to have uh, these two prominent speakers, uh, experts on, on Honduras, and we'll be talking about uh, the elections in Honduras and, and what those elections represent for the future of Honduras. So let me introduce uh, uh, Victor Mesa, uh, who is the director of the Centro de Documentación de Honduras, uh, document, uh, Documentation Center of Honduras. Uh, he has been Minister of Interior in Honduras, and now he is the member of the Security Reform Commission in, in Honduras. So, and he is a well-known, reputed uh, intellectual in Honduras. We're ha very happy to have him here. 
Uh, also with that, <laughs> with us is Dr. Orlando Perez. He's a professor of political science and director of the Cultural and Global Studies Program at the College of Humanities and Social and Behavioral Science at Central Michigan University. Uh, Orlando has been extensive, has done extensive work on Honduras. He's member of a network in which I also belong. This is the Latin American Public Opinion Project, and we have been uh, colleagues, uh, and we're working on Central America for, for, for many years, and we, we're very happy to have him here, too. So let's. So let me explain the, the mechanics of the of this event. We we wanted to have this event in a very sort of informal way to have a chat about what is happening in Honduras, what could happen in Honduras. That's why you see this sort of uh, this position here. So every participant will have first 20 minutes to speak about you know, the, uh, the, uh, the results of the election in Honduras, and then uh, we'll hear their opinions about what we can expect uh, on the future of Honduras. Uh, this will be for 20 minutes. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Orlando Perez, and then and Dr. Victor Mesa. And then we'll open the floor to your questions and, and comments. And we expect this to be a very, very, a friendly, informal chat on Honduras, and we can uh, we can be illuminated by their knowledge of, of, of Honduras. So, without further ado, let me give the mic to my colleague Orlando Perez. Is this on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Miguel. Uh, Thank you for that kind introduction. Thank you all of you for being here. Um, I, um, I have a bachelor's degree from FIU, so this is like homecoming uh, to me. When I was a student, <laughs> when I was a student here, um, Dr. Rosenberg was the director of LAC, so he's moved up quite a bit. Uh, Frank, something to look forward to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I want to thank uh, Mark certainly for 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 being here, and uh, he was uh, I, I read him as a scholar and 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 admire him uh, greatly for his work uh, on Central America. Obviously, I want to thank uh, Frank Mora, uh, who has moved up in the world uh, from being the uh, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Latin American Affairs to the Director of LAC and uh, warmer, warmer weather. So thank you, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Miguel, for the invitation, and thank you all for being here. Um, what I wanna do, uh, Miguel touched on the fact that uh, he and I have worked on a project that's currently housed at Vanderbilt University uh, known as the Latin American Public Opinion Project and its uh, signature um, uh, survey, the America's Barometer, you will see on the on that slide um, a little bit of information about the survey uh, and its uh, history. The America's Barometer itself has been done every two years uh, since 2004. Um, and what I want to do uh, before um, sort of commenting on um, what I think is the noteworthy uh, uh, results of the elections and what it means for the future of Honduras. I want to present some data which is from our 2012 um, uh, survey, which I think provides a very important look at the political culture context in which the elections were held uh, uh, this past uh, November. And, and I think can explain some of the, uh, some of the results. Um, 
I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a URL there, www.americasbarometer.org. If you go to that URL, you can find the national reports for, for Honduras. Uh, from 2004 to 2012. You can also, if you're a student and want to download the database, they are free and you can download them and you can, um, you know, massage the data as you feel uh, uh, inclined uh, to do so. Um, you can see there some of the descriptions of the data set, but I'm, I'm going to uh, move on if you have questions specific to the data and to the survey, uh, uh, you can certainly ask uh, later. Next. Um, th that is essentially so you can see the, um, the extent of the sample for 2012 and particularly the highlighted one for Honduras. It was a survey of 1,728 uh, Hondurans uh, apt to vote or, or citizens uh, able to vote with a sampling error of 2.4 percent. Uh, it is a national representative uh, sample. Okay. Um, this chart uh, is interesting because what it shows is it shows the evolution of the most important problem for Hondurans since 2004. And what, you, and what is of note is that in 2004, um, about three quarters of Hondurans said the economy was the most important uh, problem, uh, some aspect of the economy, inflation, unemployment, uh, et cetera. But in 2012, we find for the first time, and we find Honduras the only country where a plurality, about a third of voters, actually um, pick politics or political problems as the most important problem facing the nation. Um, and, and here we're talking about weak institutions, we're talking about po political polarization, uh, we're talking about the, 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 the way that institutions either work or don't work. And it's important because Honduras was the only country in the 2012 round where uh, a plurality actually chose politics. For most other countries, it was either the economy or security. So that's a context in which these elections took place. Um, here, this, this chart is interesting. We have a, uh, a measure that we call triply dissatisfied citizens. And these are citizens who fall below uh, the scale midpoint, and these are um, uh, scales uh, created out of a variety of different questions. And we have here three important concepts and three important scales. Support for democracy, support for national institutions, and an evaluation of the incumbent government's economic performance. And what you see there is the percentage of Hondurans who fall below the mean for each of these scales for each of the three scales. And in 2012, you have um, close to 38%, right? And 38%, you know, a little bit, slightly more than, than, than a third, uh, seems okay, I guess, that a third are, are dissatisfied. But take a look at the difference between 2010 and 2012, a significant increase, almost equal to the level of dissatisfaction that we found prior to the crisis of 2009. So in many ways, we had an electorate in 2013 that was as dissatisfied, as, uh, 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 as not supportive of the institutions and the economic performance of the government as they were in 2008. Um, and here, I think you, you notice why that 38% is so relevant. You will see that Honduras um, tops the scale. It is the country, or was the country in 2012, that had the highest by far, the highest by far triply dissatisfied citizenry. So that is the context in which these elections uh, were, happen were happening. Um, this is another measure that is used by uh, the, the project, by LAPOP, in which we take two very important democratic values, uh, legitimacy and system support and political tolerance, 
Um, and we define this two by two table um, in which we classify um, opinions that are um, high in political tolerance and high in legitimacy as conducive to stable democracy. And then the other important cell for our purposes uh, today are those that have low tolerance and low system support as um, opinions or attitudes in which democracy could be at risk. And you will notice that you have then the results across the America's barometer. And you find that for 2012, over 50% of Hondurans fell in the red cell, in the democracy at risk cell. That is to say they had low system support and low political uh, tolerance. And you will notice on the other uh, chart, the one stable democracy, that only about 7% of Hondurans um, fell on the stable democracy cell. Those two numbers, the 55% and the 7%, are by far the lowest and by far the highest among the 26 countries that formed uh, the America's Barometer in 2012. Next. And there you see democracy at risk. You see the percentages for every country. You will notice that Honduras is by far the, 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 the highest at 55%, with Canada uh, the lowest at 8.7 percent in terms of democracy at risk. It seems that part of the story, or a very big part of the story, is the decline in political tolerance. The political polarization in the country since 2009, um, and it really since 2004, we've seen a deterioration in the extent to which Hondurans are willing to extend basic democratic rights to people who disagree with themselves politically. So not only do we have a political polarization in the country, but we also have uh, each side basically disqualifying the other uh, in terms of exercising political rights. This is a scale, this is a mean on a scale that is composed of four questions. Each of those questions um, gets at, the, at attitudes uh, toward the extent to which citizens are willing to extend very basic political rights, the right to vote, the right to make a speech on TV, the right to uh, uh, protest peacefully to, to people who think differently from them, who criticize continuously the, the, the system, not the incumbent government, but the political system. And what you find there is that Hondurans systematically on all the four indicators, as well as on the scale, are at the lowest in political tolerance among all the countries of the region surveyed in 2012, right? So that's a pretty dismal situation and context in which to have a democratic political uh, elections. Finally, in terms of the data that I wanna, that I wanna present, uh, some good news is that um, you will see in that chart the mean on a scale of support for coups, all right? We ask a series of questions, three questions about whether coups are justified or not uh, under certain circumstances, and this is a composite of those three questions, and you will see that in 2008, uh, Hondurans positively, 51 uh, out of zero to 100 means that, uh, that Hondurans essentially supported, that a majority supported a, a coup or justified a coup under certain circumstances. As a result of what happened in 2009, we think those numbers declined significantly in 2008. Uh, and while they slightly increased in 2012, they didn't increase significantly. And so basically, Hondurans showed tremendous dissatisfaction with the way their institutions worked. Their political tolerance was low, their support for democracy was low, but certainly their experience in 2009 um, led them, we think, to discount, or at least a majority to discount a coup as a possible as a possible remedy. Um, to conclude, I think um, 
there's there's three key conclusions that I would draw from the elections themselves beyond these numbers that represent kind of the political culture context. And and I'm sure Victor is going to talk a lot more about some of these um, some of these results or some of these issues. One is the rupture, the end of the traditional historical bipartisanship. Uh, I think the emergence of uh, Libre and PAC, the anti-corruption party, is significant. What they're going to do with those votes and and uh, and and the the number of deputies that they received in Congress is another question. But I think the rupture of the traditional bipartisanship is an important result of the elections. The emergence of an alt of a left, political left in the country. Um, that I think has appealed to disenfranchised voters, to alienated voters, that I think is, is important. Some of that left is out of the Liberal Party, but, but a lot of it is, is, I believe, new voters, disenfranchised voters that had not been represented by the Liberal or the National Parties, which are traditionally conservative parties. Uh, and then finally, the emergence of an anti-system party on the right, all right, uh, from outside of the traditional parties, because I think Libre comes from the liberal party in, in many ways, Celaya being a former liberal, um, but the, the, the emergence of PAC, the anti-corruption party, and Salvador Narraya, uh, I think that is, a, is an interesting uh, result. I think it's an interesting result for uh, the, the political system going forward. Um, by all measures, he is essentially a right-wing populist in many ways, but his votes and what he does with those votes and what he does with his members of Congress is going to be very interesting going forward in terms of building alliances uh, in Congress. So I think uh, those three things, um, I think, are, are among the, the many th lessons uh, to be learned uh, about these elections. Thank you. Thank you, Orlando. Uh, before uh, uh, passing the mic to, to Victor Mesa, let me ask, ask you something. How, ma how many of you understand Spanish? Or don't understand Spanish, rather? OK, so I I'll be doing some translation, because Victor is going to be speaking in, in, uh, in Spanish. Uh, uh, and since we are a sort of bilingual college, university, well, we'll, uh, we'll try Spanish, and then I'll be translating some in English. So, Victor. Gracias, Miguel. En primer lugar, quiero agradecer a la Universidad Internacional de la Florida, y en particular al Centro de Estudios Latinoamericanos y del Caribe, tanto por la invitación personal para acompañarles en este evento, como por la escogencia de un tema tan importante para nosotros los centroamericanos, como son las recientes elecciones hondureñas de domingo 24 de noviembre. Uh, I want to thank Florida International University <coughs> and the Center for Latin American Studies, not only for this event, but also for choosing this, uh, this topic. Uh, the Honduran elections are an important topic uh, for all of us. Las elecciones hondureñas tienen una doble importancia importancia para Honduras en particular y para la región centroamericana, el Caribe y el norte de América en especial. Tomemos en cuenta que Honduras es el país que está ubicado en el centro de la región centroamericana. Es el único país que tiene tres fronteras terrestres en Centroamérica, con tres países particularmente sensibles, Nicaragua, El Salvador y Guatemala. Pero además, es el único país que tiene nueve fronteras marítimas en un espacio que tiene 46 conexiones transfronterizas en el Caribe. Cuando tenemos... So, uh, the importance of Honduras is, uh, no, is double. Not only is uh, because of Honduras itself, of the elections, not only because Honduras is at the center uh, of Central America, but also Honduras 
uh, he has borders with three other countries in, 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 in Central America, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and, and Guatemala. It also has nine uh, mar marine borders in, in, in Central America. Esta excepcional situación geográfica concede al país una importancia geoestratégica especial. Por lo tanto, lo que suceda en ese país, en términos políticos, tiene una importancia trascendental para sus vecinos, para la región y para la paz internacional. Uh, what happens in Honduras is, again, it's important not only for Honduras, but also for, for the region. It has a huge strategic importance for what happens in Honduras, not only important for Honduras, but also for its neighbors and the, the region overall. Voy a tratar de hacer una síntesis para calificar cuáles son las características más importantes de las elecciones hondureñas del domingo 24 de noviembre recién pasado. Uh, I'll try to summarize uh, the main features of the uh, Honduran elections of, of November 24th. En los últimos 33 años, que es el periodo de transición del militarismo a la democracia en Honduras, han habido 10 elecciones. Esta que vamos a analizar es la número 10. In the last 33 years uh, in which uh, we have had a transition from, from military governments to, to civilian governments, we have had 10 different elections. Esta repetición de elecciones a lo largo de 33 años ha creado lo que podríamos llamar una cierta cultura electoral. Pero eso no quiere decir que se ha creado cultura democrática. These uh, ten elections, did having elections, these ten different elections uh, has created a sort of electoral culture. But that doesn't mean that we have had or we have created a democratic culture. El golpe de Estado del año 2009 es la mejor prueba de que la cultura democrática tiene un déficit muy importante en Honduras, a pesar de la existencia de una tradición electoral. The, uh, the coup d'état 2009 is the, is the proof, is the best proof, that uh, despite these elections, uh, we haven't had a democratic culture uh, in Honduras. El golpe de Estado fue el mejor ejemplo, la demostración, de que la institucionalidad hondureña es incapaz de procesar democráticamente la conflictividad política. The, the coup d'état is the proof that uh, in the case of Honduras, Honduras is uh, unable to process the uh, conflicts uh, within, uh, the political conflicts within Honduras. Por lo tanto, la primera característica de las elecciones es que estas son las primeras elecciones democráticas después del golpe de Estado. So the main feature of these elections is that these are the first elections after the coup d'état, the first democratic elections after the coup d'état. Por lo tanto, son las elecciones que abren la posibilidad de cerrar el periodo de transición posterior al golpe y abrir nuevas posibilidades para una sociedad tolerante y democrática. So these elections uh, open the possibility to close the period of the, uh, the period opened by the coup d'etat and so uh, create the conditions for a democratic uh, process in Honduras. La segunda característica de estas elecciones es que son las primeras elecciones en la historia de Honduras en donde participan nueve partidos políticos con ocho candidatos presidenciales. Uh, the second characteristic of, of this election uh, is this is the first electoral process in which we have nine different political parties with eight different uh, candidates for the presidency. Históricamente, a lo largo de 100 años, las elecciones en Honduras eran la disputa entre dos partidos políticos. 
un sistema bipartidista. Hoy, por primera vez, la disputa es entre más partidos políticos, concretamente cuatro partidos políticos con posibilidades de ganar las elecciones y en total nueve partidos políticos en la participación electoral. Esto quiere decir que son las primeras elecciones en que existe el multipartidismo por encima del bipartidismo. Historically in Honduras we have had a, a two party system in which uh, competition, political competition basically has has uh, revolved around two political parties. In these elections uh, uh, in this election we have had nine different political parties with four four uh, political parties with actual possibilities to, to win the elections. Esto es consecuencia directa del golpe de Estado del 2009 que rompió el viejo equilibrio tradicional del bipartidismo y abrió las posibilidades para la participación de nuevas fuerzas políticas en el país. This is the direct result of the coup d'état of 2009 that uh, broke down the old system, two-party system, and opened the possibilities for the uh, participation of other political forces. La tercera característica de las elecciones hondureñas es la siguiente. A pesar de que hay una nueva dinámica política, una nueva realidad política después del golpe de Estado, las elecciones siguen siendo reguladas por una vieja legislación anterior al golpe de Estado. The, the third characteristic is despite that in Honduras now we have a new political reality, uh, in fact, uh, the, the electoral system continues uh, being controlled by an old uh, legislation, uh, electoral legislation. O sea que la vieja legislación electoral estaba diseñada para el bipartidismo. Por lo tanto, ahora se ha convertido en un obstáculo, en una camisa de fuerza para el multipartidismo. So, so the old, um, the old uh, legislation, the old electoral law was designed for a two-party system, not for a multi-party system. And now the legislation, the law, the electoral law has become a sort of obstacle for, uh, for the new realities in, in Honduras. Una cuarta característica de estas elecciones es que son las elecciones más caras en términos de dinero de la, de la historia de Honduras. A fourth characteristic is that these are the most expensive elections in the history of Honduras. Se calcula conservadoramente que las elecciones han costado unos 150 millones de dólares. Some observers believe that uh, the elections uh, have cost uh, around 150 million dollars in Honduras. ¿De dónde procede tanto dinero? ¿De dónde proceden estos millones de dólares? Where is this money coming from? Hay tres fuentes identificadas para saber de dónde procede este dinero hacia los partidos políticos. There are three uh, sources uh, where money or resources are coming for, for, for the elections. En primer lugar, el Estado, que por ley está obligado a financiar una parte de las actividades políticas. First place, uh, the state. Uh, according to law, uh, the state has to finance uh, activity, uh, electoral activities. En segundo lugar, las fuentes privadas, que son los aportes económicos de las empresas y de los empresarios individuales. Uh, secondly, we have private donors who are supporting some, uh, who supported also uh, uh, elections and electoral choices. Y en tercer lugar, lo que diplomáticamente se llama fuentes irregulares de financiación, <laughs> pero que son las fuentes vinculadas al crimen organizado y al narcotráfico. And thirdly, uh, we have also what is called irregular uh, uh, sources that usually are linked to organized crime and drug trafficking organizations. Como en el sistema político hondureño no existe una cultura de transparencia y rendición de cuentas con respecto a los partidos políticos, 
es muy difícil realmente desde el punto de vista de la investigación académica identificar cuánto dinero del crimen organizado está circulando en la campaña electoral. Since in the Honduran political culture there is no uh, a tradition of accountability, it's very hard to identify uh, where this money coming from. Sin embargo, yo diría que estas elecciones han permitido identificar zonas específicas de lo que se llaman narcoeconomías locales, en donde la influencia del narcotráfico va paralela con la evaporación de la institucionalidad estatal, con la lenta desaparición del Estado y su gradual sustitución por las redes delincuenciales del crimen organizado. However, this, uh, this electoral process has allowed us to see, uh, eh, I'm sorry, por favor, puede repetir. Sí. La desaparición <laughs> o evaporación de la institucionalidad estatal y su sustitución por narcoeconomías locales con redes clientelares del narcotráfico. Uh, this, el, uh, this election has allowed us to see basically the, the erosion of the role of, of the state and its substitution for uh, criminal economies uh, in substitution of the, of the state. Por lo tanto, estas elecciones han tenido la particularidad de mostrar a los ojos del país entero, de la sociedad hondureña, el peligro y el desafío que representa el crimen organizado y el narcotráfico para la institucionalidad del Estado y para el Estado de Derecho. So, this election have, have, have shown to the country and, and the world uh, the, the risk uh, associated with, uh, uh, with these challenges for the institutions in Honduras and this challenge for the rule of law in Honduras. Una característica adicional es que estas elecciones han sido las más observadas en la historia de Honduras. Más de 700 observadores internacionales y más de 15,000 observadores nacionales convierten a estas elecciones en las más vigiladas de toda la historia de Honduras. An additional feature of these elections uh, is that these elections have been uh, the most observed uh, uh, over, over so elections in, in, the, in, the, in, the, um, in the country with more than 700 international uh, observers and more than 15,000 national observers in, uh, in, in, in the elections. Al mismo tiempo, estas son las elecciones más inseguras en la historia de Honduras, porque se producen en el clima de inseguridad más peligroso en toda la historia de Honduras, cuando Honduras se ha convertido en el país más violento de América Latina. At the, at the same time, these are the most insecure elections in Honduras, uh, because Honduras has become one of the most violent countries in, in, in the world. Y curiosamente han sido las elecciones más concurridas de los últimos 10 años en Honduras. And, and, and curiously, these elections have been uh, the election with the highest turnout in the recent history in Honduras. En esta ocasión, el ausentismo de las elecciones fue de 39%. In these, in these elections, uh, no participation has been 39% of those enrolled. Hace apenas 10 años era de 45% y hace 4 años era de 52%. El ausentismo, sí. El abstencionismo. 52% hace 4 años. Four years ago it was uh, 54%, sorry? Sí. Yeah. 52. Uh, 52%, yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Y en este año fue de 2013, o sea que ha habido una disminución. ¿Por qué? Simplemente porque hay un nuevo interés por la política. Uh, this reduction, uh, or rather this increase in turnout, uh, is a signal of interest in politics in Honduras. 
y esto solo se explica por el golpe de estado del 2009. And we only explain this because of the coup d'etat in 2009. El golpe de estado generó una nueva dinámica política expresada en el rechazo y la condena al golpe de estado. The uh, coup d'etat created a new political dynamic in which uh, basically that revolved around the uh, rejection against the coup d'etat. Miles y miles de hondureños durante seis meses, 182 días, desfilaron todos los días contra el golpe de estado en el año 2009. Thousands and thousands of Hondurans uh, demonstrated during six months uh, after the coup d'etat uh, and, and against the coup d'etat. Esa resistencia evidente al golpe de estado se tradujo en una nueva dinámica política que se expresó en estas elecciones en una mayor participación. That resistance uh, translated into a new political dynamic that was show, uh, that appear in these elections. Esto demuestra que la sociedad hondureña está convencida que los problemas de la democracia se resuelven con más democracia en las urnas y no con golpes de Estado. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is evidence that for the Honduran society, the problems of, democ of democracy are resolved in the elections, in the, in, in the polls, uh, using ballots uh, to restore democracy. Al mismo tiempo, yo diría una nueva característica que estas elecciones se han producido en un clima de creciente desconfianza con respecto a las instituciones del Estado que organizan y dirigen los procesos electorales. Another feature is the increasing uh, mistrust uh, on the um, institution, uh, state institutions uh, which control and regulate elections in Honduras. La desconfianza hacia el tribunal electoral es muy grande. El tribunal electoral sufre las consecuencias de la debilidad de todas las instituciones hondureñas y por lo tanto no tiene la credibilidad ni la legitimidad necesaria para ofrecer resultados totalmente creíbles. Uh, mistrust uh, on the uh, electoral tribunal is, is very high and, and reflects the lack of legitimacy and credibility that uh, this institution as a representative of other institutions Honduras have. Finalmente, estas han sido las elecciones más ideologizadas de la historia reciente de Honduras en donde por primera vez en mucho tiempo se confrontan dos visiones sobre el Estado. Final, Una, oh, sí. sorry. Yeah. Finally, these yeah. are the more um, um, ideological, ideological uh, elections in the mm -hmm. history of Honduras, in which uh, you can see the, the clash of two visions of, this, of the state. Si analizamos en su conjunto todas las características mencionadas, podemos entender mejor por qué el resultado de estas elecciones permitió que un partido ganara la presidencia, pero perdiera el parlamento. Si analizamos el resultado de las elecciones, podemos entender cómo un partido ganó la presidencia, pero también perdió las elecciones en el Congreso. El partido que ganó las elecciones perdió 23 diputados. The, the party that won the presidential elections lost 23 uh, congressmen. El otro partido tradicional, Partido Liberal, perdió 20 diputados. The other political party uh, lost 20 uh, congressmen and women. Los partidos pequeños tradicionales perdieron 8 diputados. The traditional small parties lost 8 uh, eight? Sí. Eight, uh, congressmen. Sits in the Congress. ¿Quiénes ganaron esos 51 diputados? Who won those 51? Nuevos? Who won those uh, 51 seats in Congress? Entonces no es muy correcto hacer una interpretación simplista de decir ganó el Partido Nacional. So ganó it, y perdió. 
it's not right to make this simplistic interpretation saying that the National Party won the elections. It does. It does. Win, it did win, but also uh, lost elections. El mensaje de la sociedad hondureña es el siguiente: quieren un poder parlamentario disperso. The, no quieren concentración de poder. No quieren una dictadura parlamentaria. The, the message of the Honduran society is simple: they don't want uh, power concentration in Congress, they want dispersion of power in Congress. El mensaje es a favor de un mejor balance y un contrabalance de poderes que es saludable y necesario para construir democracia en Honduras. The message is that uh, Hondurans want some balance of power in Congress and also some sort of counterbalance uh, of power in, in Congress. Por lo tanto, yo diría que a pesar de las dificultades y algunas dudas que surgen en torno a la transparencia del proceso electoral hondureño, la conclusión principal es la siguiente. Las elecciones de noviembre pasado demostraron la voluntad de la mayoría de los hondureños para vivir en una democracia de mejor calidad, en una democracia más transparente, en un país con menos corrupción y en un país más seguro. So, despite the difficulties uh, facing these elections, the, uh, the electoral result shows the, 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 the will of the Honduran people to live in democracy, to have a, 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 a higher uh, democracy, uh, quality of democracy. Por lo tanto, debemos de ver el futuro inmediato de Honduras con un cierto espíritu optimista en el sentido de que vamos a tener un parlamento más democrático, un parlamento menos absolutista, un parlamento con mejor debate, más calidad y sobre todo generador de nueva cultura política que requiere tolerancia, capacidad de negociación y sobre todo capacidad de construir alianzas y acuerdos para bien de Honduras para la gobernabilidad del país. So, um, we can see uh, 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 we can see a very optimistic future in Honduras because uh, what people want is a more democratic Congress, a less authoritarian Congress uh, with more debate that requires more tolerance, more debate uh, in, in Congress. Esas serían las características con las que podría calificar el proceso electoral hondureño que acaba de concluir y las perspectivas que abre para la democracia en Honduras. Gracias. Those will be the characteristics of, of the elections and the perspective that opens for the future of democracy in Honduras. Thanks. So now we're open to, to your questions uh, or comments. I urge you to be sure in your questions so we can have all the time for our guests to, to, to respond. Speak. Yeah, Randy. Well, that's, that's really the, the $64,000 question. And the, 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 the problem, I mean, a logical alliance would be for the national and the liberal parties to ally. Together they would have 74 to 75 seats, depending on the final count. However, uh, the liberals are split. So there are certain uh, liberal deputies that would not support, uh, or would be difficult for them to support an alliance with the national uh, party. So I think the, that, that alliance as an official alliance to govern the Congress and pass legislation is going to be difficult. Um, what, what seems more likely is that there will be uh, um, alliances in relation to particular legislation or particular issues, and uh, depending on how able uh, how flexible the new president is, and the national party is, uh, they could find receptive 
votes in in, in different contexts. Um, but that alliance between the nationals and the liberals is going to be very, very hard. It is also very hard to see an alliance between the liberals and Libre because of the animosities that were created by the split. Um, I guess the, the big question mark is what uh, the third uh, m uh, or the fourth major political force, the anti-corruption party, is going to is going to do. I mean, and, and, and their electoral campaign doesn't really give us much information about what they're going to do. They said they were going to clean up corruption, but that was kind of a vague slogan. Victor? Yo diría que la nueva composición del Congreso, sin duda alguna, demanda y exige nuevas formas de hacer política. The new, the new composition of Congress uh, demands uh, new forms of, of doing politics. Esto tiene que ver con la cultura política democrática. La tradición de la clase política hondureña no es precisamente una tradición de cultura política democrática. Por lo tanto, habrá que hacer esfuerzos adicionales para que el nuevo parlamento pueda encontrar fórmulas de negociación, de flexibilidad, de habilidad, de tolerancia, a fin de poder construir alianzas viables en beneficio de Honduras. Eh, la cultura política del país ha quedado a prueba con estas elecciones. Uh, the political culture of, of the country, uh, it, I'm sorry, I, I lost uh, completely that. It does not, does, is not conducive to building mm -hmm. coalitions in Congress. Exactly. So new, uh, the political parties and politicians will have to, uh, to really uh, try to uh, uh, negotiate, uh, to acquire this political culture in order to negotiate uh, the, the conditions. Because you have more fragmentation, you could potentially have more polarization, and, the ch and you still have an institutional deficit that will not be addressed as a result of this election. And so even though people went out and voted, one can assume, right, Victor, that there is high expectations, and that those expectations will likely not be met. And so how will that if you could extend a little bit and think about when people say, I voted, and there's still as much corruption as there was before, there is still more violence as there was before, there's still the same level of institutional deficit as before, what is the, what is the outcome of that? What, what, in four years from now, maybe less than four years, how will the public's attitude, Orlando, change in your poll during the next four years if in fact, which I think is a good chance, that many of the pending issues in, in Honduras will not be resolved by the outcome of this election. Yo creo que, como señalé al principio, estas son las primeras elecciones cargadas de una visión ideológica muy marcada, en donde se planteó el tema de el sistema y el antisistema. As I said before, these are the first elections. Uh, very ideological elections in which uh, we have the system, the vision of the system and the vision of the anti-system. Por primera vez en un debate electoral se planteó el tema de cambiar el Estado. For the first time, reformar profundamente el Estado. For the first time in the debate, electoral debate, we have the debate about reforming the state, change the state. Y creo que a pesar de la fragmentación que estas elecciones han generado en el espacio político, crea condiciones favorables para replantear la reforma del Estado hondureño, profunda reforma del Estado hondureño. And despite the fragmentation that this uh, electoral process has, uh, has, has, has represented, it 
opens the possibility to reform in the uh, in the political system uh, in Honduras. Voy a poner un ejemplo de mi trabajo actual como comisionado de la reforma del sistema de seguridad pública. I'm going to put an example uh, on, based on my own work as a commissioner in the uh, security reform uh, commission. El crimen organizado y el narcotráfico son los dos grandes desafíos que tiene Honduras en este momento como Estado. The uh, organized crime and drug trafficking are the, the big, biggest challenges that Honduras have as, as, as of now. Para tener alguna posibilidad de éxito en la lucha contra el crimen organizado, necesitamos un sistema de seguridad pública depurado, transparente, eficiente, nuevo, reformado. To have any possibility uh, 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 to have a, a new uh, political system, we, we need a, a new, uh, a clean uh, security system in Honduras. Sin reforma profunda del sistema de seguridad pública, Honduras no tiene futuro como Estado. Without a reform in the security system, a deep reform in the security system, we don't have, in Honduras, doesn't have any, any possibilities. Y eso también es válido en el sistema de partidos y en el sistema político. Por ejemplo, sin una nueva ley electoral, no podrán volver a haber elecciones democráticas en Honduras. And that's also true for the party system without any deep reform in the political system and the electoral, any electoral reform, we won't have any, uh, any, I'm sorry, uh, democratic uh, system. Estas elecciones han mandado un mensaje claro. Es necesaria una nueva arquitectura jurídica para los procesos electorales en Honduras, para que tengan credibilidad y para que tengan legitimidad. It's necessary a new law architecture in order for the elections to have a legitimacy and credibility. Pero además han mandado otro mensaje. El Estado tiene que reducir los niveles de corrupción que lo vuelven un Estado ineficiente y lo ponen en el peligro de convertirse en un Estado fallido. Sin una reforma profunda del sistema de control y transparencia y rendición de cuentas, el Estado hondureño no es un Estado viable en el futuro inmediato. There is another message. That we, need to, we need to reduce the levels of corruption in Honduras. Without a reform dealing with corruption in Honduras, uh, it's not viable any, any, any reform in, in, in Honduras, political reform. Yes. El último informe de transparencia internacional muestra que Honduras en los últimos cuatro años perdió 10 puntos de calificación en materia de corrupción, y pasó del lugar 130 al lugar 140. O sea que en 10 puntos el país se volvió más corrupto en los últimos cuatro años. The last report of the Transparency International shows that Honduras lost 10 points, eh, 10 positions in the ranking of, of transparency in the world. O sea que para recuperar los valores democráticos, para Asegurar niveles de gobernabilidad del nuevo gobierno tendrá forzosamente que encarar el reto de la reforma del Estado. Si no hay reforma del Estado, no veo un futuro muy optimista con respecto a la gobernabilidad y a la tranquilidad política en Honduras. To recover democratic values, we need uh, to face reform in the Honduran system. Let's go here and then over there. Yeah, just very quickly. Um, the, the importance of the Congress in the Honduran system cannot be overestimated. In, in other political systems in Latin America, a divided Congress could be bypassed, could be ignored by strong presidents. One of the things that, one of the many reasons, but one of the, the, the things that led to the gridlock that then led to the coup in 2009 was in fact that the Constitution of Honduras empowers the Congress, the National Congress, um, in significant ways over the budget, uh, over other issues, vis-a-vis um, -vis the president. So working with Congress, if that is 
uh, uh, going to happen is essential for uh, President-elect uh, uh, Hernandez to really get any reforms uh, through. The other point I would make, um, I guess apropos of uh, Dr. Mora's uh, question and then apropos of his former role in, in the U.S. government, is I think the U.S. government needs to use its leverage uh, leverage its bilateral assistance, leverage its influence with the new uh, government of Honduras to really encourage the government uh, to have a significant and deep transformation of security, of the security forces, and not just a military police, but really a transformation both of the police and of the military. I think the police transformation is going to be easier than transforming uh, the military, uh, but it's going to have to happen. the electoral officials, the people that participated, have they considered improving relations with the United States, even though we do have to improve relations with Latin American countries? But do you have in your plan the alliances with the United States, and in which way can we contribute to improve uh, the conditions, even though by not interfering with uh, with your powers in, in, in uh, Honduras, uh, that we can contribute, and we we are a large sector of Hispanic in the United States, with the largest minority in the United States. And can we, is any way uh, that we can help and be an ally, ally to your government, if it's to reduce poverty? and also to fight uh, uh, discrimination, to fight crime. In, in which way have do you have you had in, in your programs, your plans, anything connected to improving the, the relation and connection with the relation to the United States? La agenda bilateral de las relaciones Honduras-Estados Unidos es una agenda variada y muy rica. The uh, bilateral agenda between the U.S. And, and Honduras is a very diverse agenda and very rich agenda. Pero hay algunos temas que resaltan por su importancia y que son los siguientes. There are some topics that are important. These are the... Uh, en primer lugar, el tema de la seguridad. Honduras es el país por el cual pasa el 80% de la droga que llega a este país. First, security. Uh, Honduras is the country in which... 80% of uh, drugs uh, coming to the United States uh, pass through there. Eso requiere una política bilateral Honduras-Estados Unidos en donde se privilegien los intereses de las dos agendas de seguridad. La agenda de los Estados Unidos y la agenda de Honduras. That requires a bilateral agenda in which uh, the interests of both countries are, are considered. The, the U.S. interests and also Honduras interests. Segundo lugar, tenemos el problema de los flujos migratorios de Honduras hacia los Estados Unidos. Flujos migratorios que van creciendo gradualmente con los años. Then en la medida the, que hay crisis en Honduras, aumenta el flujo migratorio hacia los Estados Unidos. Then we have the problem of the migratory flow, the migration, uh, to the extent that we have more problems in Honduras we have more, uh, an increase uh, migration to the United States from Honduras. Luego están los temas bilaterales relacionados con el comercio, relacionados con la economía. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? 
que los Estados Unidos tienen que entender que el escenario político hondureño tiene hoy nuevos actores. Then we have the, the, the issue of trade, the economic issues in the bilateral agenda. Uh, what does this mean? It means that the United States has to understand that in Honduras now we have the, another uh, economic actors. Ya no solamente son dos actores tradicionales, liberales, nacionales. Hoy tienes por lo menos cuatro actores clave para tomar decisiones en Honduras. Eso requiere una modificación en sus prioridades y en su interlocución con la clase política hondureña. La política norteamericana debe tener la flexibilidad suficiente para entender que esa variación en la composición del escenario político requiere nuevas formas de abordaje, nuevos estilos y quizás nuevas formas de tolerancia. ¿no? We no longer Let me, let, me, let, me, let me just uh, translate that. Uh, we no longer have two political actors in Honduras, but we have four political, at least four political actors in Honduras. And the United States has to understand that we have more actors that have to be taken into account uh, to understand what is happening in Honduras. Yes, we, do, we thank you for the response, but we do have more to offer. And we, we, have, we, and we should be offering more. And uh, because we are brothers, uh, Hispanic, todos somos Thank, thank you for that. Dan, you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Mesa, you mentioned that the political landscape is growing. You also mentioned that there were non traditional. Uh, actually there are non-traditional funding sources to the political parties. Do you see that this funding source by the organized crime is a means to legitimize themselves by introducing themselves into legitimate factions of the government? Or do you see it still as a, simply as corruption? Or what exactly do you see this as? Mire, el desafío del crimen organizado está directamente relacionado con la debilidad de las instituciones del Estado. The challenge of organized crime is, is related to the uh, weakness of institu state institutions in Honduras. Entre más débiles son las instituciones estatales, mayor es la penetración y cooptación del crimen organizado sobre el Estado hondureño. The weaker the institutions, the more penetration of organized crime in, in the Honduran state. En el país estamos viviendo un lento y silencioso proceso de evaporación de las instituciones estatales. In Honduras we're witnessing a slow process of uh, evaporation of institutions in eh, state institutions. Ese proceso de evaporación se produce en aquellos territorios en donde el crimen organizado y el narcotráfico es más fuerte. That process takes place in those, eh, in those areas in which organized crime and drug trafficking is stronger. El crimen organizado controla unas seis o siete regiones del territorio hondureño. Organized crime controls six or seven regions in the Honduran territory. Voy a ponerle un ejemplo. Un municipio en occidente del país. Se llama, paradójicamente, El Paraíso. One, one <laughs> an example is one municipality called uh, El Paraíso, The Paradise. Los representantes del Estado no pudieron entrar el día de las elecciones. State representatives couldn't uh, go in in that territory during election day. Y el candidato del narcotráfico no permitió ningún otro candidato en la elección. And the, and the ah. candidate of drug trafficking didn't allow any other candidate over there. La pregunta es, ¿por qué el Estado hondureño permite una situación así? Why does the uh, Honduran state allow this, this situation? Por dos razones. For two reasons. Porque es un Estado débil y porque es un estado corrupto. For two reasons, because this is a weak state, also because it's a corrupt state. 
la corrupción se traduce en debilidad institucional. Corruption translates into institutional weakness. Y la debilidad institucional facilita la corrupción. And institutional weakness uh, allows uh, corruption. Es una mezcla siniestra de It's corrupción y debilidad institucional que convierte a Honduras en lo que nosotros llamamos un estado degradado, que es la puerta para entrar al estado fallido. This is a perverse mixing, this is the, the gateway for a degraded state that is uh, just uh, the previous state to a failed state. The, the security concerns are regional, right? Mm -hmm. The transnational criminal networks, drug trafficking is a regional problem. And so I think one of the ways that the U.S. can, can certainly assist is to focus uh, its assistance uh, at the regional level. So, for example, uh, a few weeks ago, and I was talking to Brian Fonseca the, uh, last night about this, a few weeks ago there was a story that the Hondurans wanted to buy jet planes, jet aircrafts, because they were concerned about the Salvadorian military, as if the Salvadorian military was the biggest threat facing the Honduran military and the Honduran state, um, which we know not to be true. So, uh, so, the, so, so trying to re-educate, <laughs> if you will, the Honduran military, uh, you know, in terms of what the real threats are to the country and transforming the institution Uh, in that direction, I think is important. I think the U.S. can play a significant role in that because it is the biggest funder uh, of the Honduran uh, armed forces and security um, apparatus. But I think it, it, it really does, it really will take a regional uh, approach. And there is a regional strategy that was developed a few years ago that I think needs some muscle behind it and some resources. importantes los actores más de más significativos en la sociedad civil que pueden influir en este proceso de cambio. Muy importante que después de del huracán Mitch en 1998, la sociedad hondureña comenzó a experimentar cambios muy importantes en materia de sociedad civil. Yo Victor. diría que hay una Honduras anterior al huracán Mitch en 1998 y otra Honduras posterior. Victor, eh, let me just, uh, the question was, what, what were the, what would be the most important yeah. uh, actor from civil society? Uh, and Victor says that I think it's important to take into account the, the uh, Hurricane Mitch in, in 1998. Yeah. Uh, and there is, uh, there is uh, before the, the Hurricane Mitch and after Hurricane Mitch. Y la diferencia está en la mayor beligerancia de las organizaciones de sociedad civil. The después, después del golpe de Estado, las organizaciones de sociedad civil han adquirido más protagonismo en la sociedad hondureña. Uh, the difference is in the role of uh, uh, civil society organizations after the Hurricane Mitch. After Hurricane Mitch, civil society organizations have taken more a major role in, in, in Honduran society. En esta Honduras actual ya no es posible gobernar sin la sociedad civil. In current Honduras it's not possible to rule without uh, civil society. Pero es todavía más imposible gobernar contra la sociedad civil. But it's impossible to, to govern against civil society. Yo siento que a pesar de algunas dificultades, las organizaciones de la sociedad civil van a tener una progresiva mayor influencia en los años inmediatamente futuros. Despite some difficulties, uh, I think that uh, civil society organization will have a, a increasing role in, in Honduran society. Particularmente aquellas organizaciones de sociedad civil vinculadas a la presión ciudadana, 
vinculadas a la incidencia política. Particularly those organizations linked to citizen mobilization, citizen, citizen pressure, uh, linked to uh, yeah, political pressure. Las organizaciones de derechos humanos y las organizaciones que trabajan temas de seguridad ciudadana. Organization, human rights organizations, organization of security, or, uh, organizations that work on security issues. Quiero ser optimista y creer que van a tener un rol más importante cada vez. I, I want to be optimistic and believe that they will have a, an increasing role. You have a question? Way back when, in the 80s, when Mark and I and Douglas and so forth were in Honduras, uh, and, and Victor will remember this, no se podía hablar de la política hondureña sin hablar de los chavos. De los militares. militares. Y hoy no oí mucho sobre los militares. Y quisiera ver si Victor tal vez podría elaborar un poco más de lo, del papel de los militares, porque a mí me parece, sin haber estudiado esto, todo esto de la droga, todo de la seguridad pública, todas esas cuestiones son del, del, del papel de los militares, ¿no? Los militares fueron un instrumento de las élites empresariales y políticas en el golpe de Estado. Pero no fueron un instrumento gratuito. Recibieron a cambio nuevas cuotas de poder político, nuevo protagonismo. Eso es malo para la democracia, sin duda alguna. Primero. Uh, the military uh, were um, uh, play a role. They were an instrument of the elites uh, uh, in Honduras. Uh, by they weren't for free. They 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 demanded something change. El nuevo protagonismo militar en la sociedad hondureña es una amenaza a la democracia. Y el mayor peligro con el nuevo gobierno es su declarada tendencia a militarizar las políticas de seguridad pública. The new role of the military is a challenge for democracy and the challenge has to do with uh, the role in security, security issues in, in, in Honduras. La militarización de las políticas de seguridad ha demostrado su escaso éxito en muchos países de América Latina. Militarization of security policies has shown uh, its lack of success in many countries in Central America, Latin America. Y por lo tanto, no hay ninguna garantía de que en Honduras van a tener éxito. There's no guarantee that they will be successful in Honduras. La gradual sustitución del rol de la policía por los militares se traduce en violaciones a los derechos humanos, crea percepción de seguridad pero no crea seguridad. The increasing es un riesgo. The increasing substitution of the police, uh, police role by the military, uh, creates this sense of security, but it is not actually improving security. It's, a, it's rather a risk. También la lucha contra el crimen organizado involucra a los militares y contamina a los militares. Also, the fight against organized crime uh, involves the military, but also contaminates the military. De la misma forma que ya contaminó y anuló la naturaleza de la policía. In the same way that it contaminates, you know, it already contaminated the nature of the police. Yo confío en que el nuevo Congreso, el nuevo Parlamento, no, no facilitará las, los deseos y las intenciones del nuevo presidente de militarizar la política de seguridad pública. I trust that the new Congress won't uh, militarize the uh, security policies in, in, in the, the new Congress yeah, won't militarize the, the policies of security in Honduras. Yeah. We have one more question. 
just a couple of just a couple of uh, things on that. I mean, it's interesting that one of the nine candidates was Romeo Vasquez Velasquez, mm -hmm. the uh, the head of the military that toppled at the time that Salaya was toppled, and he got a sum total of six thousand ninety votes as of the last count, which is zero point two percent. Um, so uh, now, of course, the vote was split, and and uh, he, he argues he doesn't. It probably is true. Didn't have a lot of money and support, et cetera, et cetera. But that's an indication that um, somebody, a, a, a military officer, who was uh, in many ways responsible for uh, the coup in two thousand and nine, didn't really. Uh, get a lot of uh, a lot of support. Traditionally in Honduras, since 1982, the the relationship between the head of the military and the president, the personal relationship has been very important. That dynamic has been very important in determining the extent to which uh, the military was subordinate or not to the president. Um, and civil military relations institutionally were a function in many ways of that relationship. It was the break between Celaya and Romeo Vasquez Velasquez, and they were friends and then broke. Uh, and there's a big story behind why they broke, but which I won't go into it, but and Victor probably knows the story better than I do. But certainly that break, uh, was a contributing factor to why uh, Vasquez Velasquez did what he did. The question that I would have now, because I don't know the answer, is what is the relationship of uh, uh, Hernandez and the current head of the of the armed forces, um, and and are those close relationship? Because that is, I think, going to um, have a great uh, uh, you know influence. Uh, in whether or not the military is in fact subordinate to the new president or not. But I agree with Victor actually on his statement about the militarized police. Um, I have been arguing that uh, what Honduras needs and what the region needs are transformed militaries into uh, gendarmeries or carabineros or some sort of I'm going to use the term Guardia Nacional, which I know has a has a you know a bad connotation in the region, but that is what they what they actually need uh, in order to deal with the new threats, as opposed to a traditional military. Can you repeat, please, then? Es interesante comprobar que en estas elecciones, por primera vez, la influencia de las redes sociales fue muy, eh, si no muy grande, pero sí fue eh, sustancialmente importante. Es interesante ver que en esta elección, por primera vez, la influencia de las redes sociales, tal vez no fue tan grande, pero fue importante. Curiosamente, 
los partidos que más utilizaron las redes sociales son los dos partidos nuevos en el Parlamento, el Partido Anticorrupción y el Partido Libre. Interestingly, uh, the two forces that most used social media were the two new political forces, Libre and eh, Partido Anticorrupción. Lo que ya indica, pues, nuevas modalidades y nuevas formas de hacer política en el país. We shows new ways of doing politics in, in the country. En relación con protestas en contra del proceso electoral, yo diría que solo se ha producido una protesta pública pacífica convocada el domingo anterior y eh, fue, una, fue una protesta multitudinaria, miles de personas convocadas por el Partido Libre y por el Partido Anticorrupción que pidieron la revisión de los datos electorales en las urnas. About, about protest, uh, there is just one single uh, significant protest that has uh, taken place that occurred uh, last Sunday in which uh, Partido Libre and uh, Partido Anticorrupción uh, asked for more transparency in, in, in the electoral process. Tengo la, la convicción y quizás la esperanza de que la revisión de las actas que está llevando a cabo en estos momentos el tribunal será un factor suficiente para bajar un poco los ánimos y convertir la frustración o el desencanto, que son legítimos, convertirlos en energía política positiva en el debate en el Parlamento. I'm convinced that the revision of the electoral acts that uh, the, the tribunal is, is doing right now will contribute to reduce uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the frustrations about the, the, the elections. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me uh, thank you all for, for, for this, and I don't want to finish this, this event without thanking again our guests, uh, Victor Mesa and Orlando Perez, and I ask you to please join me and thanking uh, them for their <laughs> participation. Thank you all. Uh, let me just make an ad here. We're, we're planning, in uh, we're planning to uh, start doing these kind of events regarding elections. We have, Latin America is having uh, elections this next year, uh, at least in four or five different countries. This is El Salvador, Costa Rica, Brazil, uh, Uruguay, so we, we expect at least to do this uh, once again uh, soon. Okay. So thank you very much all.